How did nearly the entire state of Kentucky fight back against the United States with civil disobedience and win? Find out in this episode of Have History Will Travel. Welcome to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and when we think of the state of Kentucky throughout history, we don't think of peaceful people. We think of hillbilly stereotypes and violent actions like the Hatfield-McCoy feud. However, in the early years of the United States, the Bluegrass State used civil disobedience or nonviolent resistance to fight back against the whiskey tax. Once the American Revolution ended, huge amounts of debt had accumulated. The Articles of Confederation did not provide a good way for states to come out from under that debt, and when the Constitution was drawn up, Alexander Hamilton, the financial wizard he was, added the last building block of the Constitution by implementing his financial plan. In this plan, the federal government assumed all of the state's debts in order for those states to use tax revenue to build things like infrastructure instead of paying off debts. However, that meant that the national government needed to collect taxes to pay for the war debts, and the new constitution allowed for that to happen. One of the taxes that Hamilton levied was an excise tax on whiskey. It was a heavy tax at about 25%, which destroyed the profit margin for sellers of the distilled liquid. The region of the country that history books point out as being the most affected by this was western Pennsylvania. Those distillers lived far from the eastern markets, and although they grew corn, it was not worth their time or the little money they would receive to transport a wagon of corn a hundred miles to the closest market. It was much more profitable for those farmers to distill their corn into whiskey and transport a wagon of spirits to the closest market. They would make a much more higher profit. However, the excise tax placed on them by Hamilton ruined that profit. This put thousands of backcountry farmers up in arms against the federal government and became known as the Whiskey Rebellion. It stands as one of the most influential events in American history because those farmers tested the strength of the national government. And when farmers began marching east, George Washington, the sitting president, led troops into battle. But before an engagement could ensue, the militant farmers disbanded. This is the first and only time that a president led troops while being president. Kentucky was also full of farmers who distilled corn, but no violence occurred there. To explain the importance of whiskey in Kentucky, in the late 1700s and into the early 1800s, there was a lack of gold and silver, as well as banknotes in the backcountry. So people used alcohol as money to buy and trade for goods. Kentucky's bluegrass region yielded high amounts of hemp, corn, and other grain. But as with Pennsylvania, it was not profitable to transport them upriver or over the mountains because the transport cost overrode any profit to be made. Additionally, Spain held the Mississippi River and prohibited Americans from exporting goods through New Orleans unless they paid high fees. During Washington's presidency, Kentucky would become a state, but when the whiskey tax was implemented, it was still part of Virginia and instead of placing a long-standing Kentuckian as the head of tax collection, Virginia's head of state revenue placed one of his family members in that role, Colonel Thomas Marshall, the father of future Chief Justice John Marshall. Marshall moved to Kentucky and started setting up tax collectors, but he immediately ran into problems. His subordinates began handing in resignations as quickly as he could hand out jobs. He was bringing in Kentuckians to fill in the positions and they were refusing to collect taxes from their friends and family. When he could find people to collect taxes, the job became very difficult because the farmers were taxed on the capacity of their stills. However, distillers kept their stills burning constantly which prevented collectors from taking proper measurements. When charges would be filed against Kentuckians for tax evasion, the grand juries would not convict them because they were made up of Kentuckians who themselves were distilling spirits and avoiding the heavy taxes. Although there were some moments of violence that broke out between Kentuckians and tax collectors, it remained fairly passive, except when it came to who Kentuckians believed was the true enemy, the Spanish. The foreign country's stranglehold on trade through New Orleans kept bluegrass farmers from capitalizing on their products, and Washington received word that the famous commander George Rogers Clark was forming up an army of Kentuckians to take over Spanish forts along the Mississippi River and march on New Orleans to open up the river for free navigation and trade. The president issued orders against any Kentuckian enlisting to fight against a foreign country which the United States had no troubles with. 
After that proclamation, the militancy fizzled out. Washington attempted to placate the Kentuckians by giving in to some of their demands. It was a combination of this civil disobedience and other external forces that forced the president to send Thomas Pinckney of South Carolina to Spain in order to negotiate the Treaty of San Lorenzo to gain free navigation of the Mississippi River and allow Americans to sell their goods at the port in New Orleans. However, it would take Thomas Jefferson becoming president for the tax evaders to finally pay taxes after they were assured that their past debts would be forgiven and that future taxes would not be at Hamilton's high rate. In this episode in history, Kentucky prepared to take matters into their own hands by calling for its sons to join in a fight against Spain in order to obtain the right to sell their goods through the port at New Orleans. They banded together against tax collectors and the state attorney general and refused to pay exorbitant taxes on their most valued commodities, so valued that it took the place of money in the backcountry of the nation. Their story was a story of civil disobedience that took on the power of the federal government as the nation had just been born. Thank you so much for watching. Next week is going to be an animated battle map dealing with an aspect of the Battle of the Wilderness as voted on by the patrons over on Patreon. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.